were you aware that all of your efforts to grow yourself and your company are sabotaged by this particular cancer? It's called gossip. Today's guest, Amir Fachizadeh, has been unlocking human potential for decades. And he's just finished his book, Gossip, The Road to Ruin. It's a must read. This episode is a must listen. It's going to help you identify just how rampant it is in society, potentially in your organization, and what to do about it. Enjoy. Welcome back to the Think Bigger Real Estate Show. I'm your host, Justin Stoddart. Uh, very excited about today's episode because we're going to solve a problem that you might not know is happening in your organization and is actually destroying it um, as we speak. And that topic is about gossip, the road to ruin. I have with me a best-selling author. Um, we're going to get to um, his full introduction here. Know that the, the, um, the place where you can go to really find snippets of this show, tactical takeaways, is going to be in the Think Bigger Real Estate group on Facebook. If you're not yet already a member, be sure you go sign up for that because everything we're talking about is going to be um, handed to you in a way that is very easy for you to digest and very easy for you to implement into your business. Uh, with that being said, again, I'm excited. A, a dear friend of mine, his name is Amir Fachizada. Uh, he's the recent author of a book, Gossip, The Road to Ruin. Amir, thank you so much for coming on the Think Bigger Real Estate Show. Coming back, this is the second time. Thank you again so much. My pleasure, Justin. Good to see you. Great to see you. Always great to see you. So for those that don't know Amir, um, he is an executive coach, uh, coaches uh, some very high-performing uh, people, uh, professionals. And um, he also, uh, for years and years, has, um, you know, your focus, what has been on leadership, communication, relationships, really getting to the bottom of, of why those things aren't working. And I'm sure that, and, and I've heard story after story, after story of people who have been coached by you where that's been unlocked and all of a sudden they see transformational uh, uh, changes in themselves as well as in their business. Um, I'd like to ask you, Amir, what, what caused you to kind of have that aha moment of like, you know, I belong in the coaching space this is like, this is who, this is what, you know, is my calling and what I'm supposed to be doing. Kind of what led you to that? Yes, I, I, absolutely. You know, for the longest time, I knew I wanted to do something that will make a difference. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I used to coach soccer in many high schools around the States, including, uh, as a matter of fact, Canby High School, uh, where my kids uh, went, went to school there. But I couldn't pinpoint what it was that I really wanted to do that would make a difference. And in early 2000, I got involved with some transformational work and that gave me, you know, uh, slowly access to see the difference that I can make with people. Hmm. And, uh, you know, as working with people became my, uh, uh, my passion, I just found a special satisfaction when uh, a you know, person's life is altered, my life is altered. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how I uh, continue doing uh, what I'm doing. I love that, Amir. Um, it is interesting when you get kind of that clarity that your job is to inspire people. I've had a very similar uh, kind of awakening really to the fact that that's what I'm supposed to do is help people to think bigger. So it's fun to be talking to somebody who has a very similar mission. Let's get into this topic that we've uh, promised the audience today, which is about gossip, the road to ruin. What caused you to want to write this book, Amir? Well, you know, I grew up in a society of uh, gossip and I have witnessed the damages that it can do to the families, you know, to relationships, uh, to work environment and so on. And I was also impacted heavily in my uh, professional world when, you know, I was, uh, you know, doing work in a different field. And, uh, you know, it got to a, a point that when I started working with several companies that had the issue, and the issue was destroying the culture, um, and notice the difference that my work did in a few months, you know, I said to myself, I've got to create something that will make this available for every company. Every human resources should have access to something that they can hand to the, you know, to the new employees or all employees that could prevent them from continuing having, you know, this, this behavior. Mm -hmm. And so in the families as well, you know, I have witnessed so many families, you know, lose a relationship because of this behavior. So all of this inspired me to uh, start uh, writing. And it took a while to really 
make it, you know, small to some degree, very easy to read, that anyone can access it, read it, and make a difference for them. Mm. Yeah, so, I love how short it is, right? I oftentimes look at books and I'm like, oh, I don't know when I'll get through that. Like, it's, it's fun to see an author that really kind of gets our um, short attention span and says, okay, this is a topic I need to master, but I don't have months to master it, right? Like, I want to, I can want to master it in one sitting. I also love how you said, um, you know, and I don't almost compare it to a cancer, right? That you have, you're on the surface doing all this work to help people and to expand their thinking and to grow them. Yet underneath all of that, the foundation of gossip is, is, is literally eating away all the progress that you're making, destroying culture, destroying families. Um, I can see, I mean, as you say that, I think about organizations where gossip was rampant and um, it really is like a cancer that's, that's, that, that kills um, people. It's, it's almost this quiet, deadly cancer where people, um, you know, trust, um, you know, which is foundational to, um, you know, organizations growing and uh, all of a sudden it takes that away, right? It, it, it starts to eliminate all of that because of uh, this, this gossip that's happening. So it's, you know, uh, fascinating that you say that. And you know, what most people don't realize uh, is that gossip is a form of communication. Hmm. Is when you are, uh, for some reason, having or hesitating, communicating with someone, it could be from uh, either being upset, being jealous, uh, being, you know, whatever reasons that you might have, you take on this, you know, behavior. And this behavior has started perhaps from early ages. I, it could be from the society, from your parents, from your friends, uh, from the school. Somewhere along the way, you picked up this, you know, uh, behavior and by practicing it and getting enjoyment, in other words, getting something out of gossiping, it becomes part of a person's communication. And some people actually think that's healthy to, you know, to, uh, to gossip about other people. Now, the form of gossip we are discussing here and in this book is the kind of gossip that uh, humiliates a, another person, you know, makes them a small, you know, I call it throw them under the bus. You know, the gossiping, you know, about the uh, entertainment industry or even government, that's not what we're referring to. We refer to relationships that get damaged and create an impact when you go and talk to someone else about someone else. You know, that, that kind of positive, you're trying to say something to someone, but you're not saying it directly. Therefore, by you creating enough evidence for yourself, by going to third person, sharing with them, and getting them on your side, you are creating a box of evidence that you have a right to do this. And the other person who you are gossiping about perhaps are wrong about whatever that happened. Either they said something, something happened, or could simply be because of uh, jealousy that will cause a person to go and talk behind someone else. Uh, so, you know, being able to recognize that I am gossiping is, is huge. So lots of people don't look at it that way. They think other people and everyone else is gossiping or they have certain behaviors that but they do not look at themselves as the cause and the, the one that are having this kind of behaviors. So you've been able to recognize that I am doing that. You know, and this book would, would be extremely effective when a person that reads it looks at themselves and say, aha, you know, no matter what percentage of the time, how often I do it, but I am the one doing it. You know, that's uh, fascinating to hear because you're right. A couple things, right, that stand out to me as you say this is that uh, 
I know that when I've gossiped about other people, there's kind of an immediate high, right? There's this immediate like, oh, that kind of feels good, right? To reveal, to be the person that's revealing information, but it immediately leaves you empty. Like afterwards, it's not healthy, right? It's not healthy spiritually. It's not healthy for your relationships to be that person that's talking about other, other people's back. And it, I mean, as I think about, or again, times that I've gossiped, right? I'm, I'm like pointing all the fingers back at me here. It's oftentimes because I've been uh, too cowardly to go address the, 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 uh, issue with the person that I'm actually talking about rather than having the spine to stand up and say, look, let's go have a conversation about this. I don't like the way that this is working. I didn't like how you did this. It's easier, right? To go talk to someone else about it and say, can you believe what they're doing? As opposed to just saying, Hey, um, I don't like how this is. I don't, I don't like what you did. I don't like how you do this. Um, the easy way, right. Is to go tell someone else about it and kind of undermine Absolutely. that person. Absolutely. It is easy because we have uh, learned to not talk to the person directly, but, you know, talk behind them because of certain fear that we create for ourselves. And this fear kind of prevents a person, well, if I were to say it directly, maybe it will create more conflicts. Not realizing by talking behind them even creates more conflicts. Or if I say it this way or that way, it might upset them or it might create more, more uh, you know, hard feelings. But, you know, but when they get to the bottom of it, what really causes a person to gossip and not you know, resolve it directly is a few elements. You know, all quality is like a cocoon. You know, a, uh, you know, a cocoon that has not opened yet. So it, it is wrapped. So when a person has a reason for themselves to gossip, let's say something happened. Somebody said something. And, uh, you know, I will find enough evidence for myself. And I will go share with so-and-so to create this cocoon that has so much justification and evidence and the reasons for me to gossip about the other person, it becomes so thick, I cannot see outside of it. So this thickness causes me to be right about my behavior. It causes the other person to be wrong or it is invalidating, invalidating the other person person point of view. As a matter of fact, when you are inside this cocoon, the other person does not have, cannot have a point of view because you are creating this. And the only way to see outside this, somehow this needs to be cracked. Now here's the, another nasty part of this. A person that is gossiping, they don't realize they are the one doing it. They think because of what the other person did or say is causing them to call gossip. They don't look at it as actually I am the one opening my mouth and creating this conversation, this conflict. Therefore, you know, somebody else has done something wrong becomes the reason for them to create justification to go and gossip about the, the other person. But here's the, another sad part of this. A person who is doing this, they're not present to the damage they're causing. And if you, when a person is holding something inside, which is, you know, usually it could be a huge complaint about something that has turned to this gossip, there is an internal impact. You know, a person cannot be fully satisfied and happy with themselves. They cannot be, you know, fulfilled and enjoying life, you know, when all of this is going on. First of all, it is, you know, it's really, you know, sucking a tremendous amount of energy out of the person. A person cannot be fully present, you know, whatever they're doing in their, you know, daily life. They cannot have open expression, self-expression, honest communication with, with others while this thing is nagging at them, not to mention the damage that is causing for the person they are 
uh, gossiping, gossiping about. So also, you know, when a person is really in that world, it takes certain aliveness out of them. And they could not really be themselves. And the beauty of this book is, in a you know, short time, the, it can give access to the person to really get a grip on it and start doing something about it, which is altering the behavior. And, uh, you know, the, the, and a couple of actions uh, for your audience. The first step, as I said, is to be able to recognize that I am. I am having this behavior. So I was mentioning how, um, how it's so um, deadly, right? Gossip. You don't realize, it seems just like a little thing because they're small conversations, right? Because they're small things. You don't realize just how deadly uh, it can be to an organization and to a person, right? And, and like, you know, something I want to highlight that you said here is that you aren't giving the, it's, like it is communication, but it's, it's not, um, you know, but it's not healthy communication. It's almost like a, like a, a diet of junk food, right? Um, yeah. Where you've got people that they actually think that they're communicating, but it's, it's causing all kinds of, of um, destruction, right? To the person and to the organization. Absolutely. And you know, as I was uh, saying, it, you know, when a person is gossiping, it takes so much energy. The person cannot be present. They cannot be fully satisfied in whatever they're doing. They, you know, they, they couldn't be fully alive because when we have this kind of behavior going on, it really takes a good amount of uh, effort on our part and not really... Uh, present to the impact uh, that it has on our, you know, our body, our health, our, our level of uh, you know, expression in life, our level of love for others. Uh, and not to mention the impact that it has on the person that you know, we are gossiping about. Yeah. It, you know, so it, it, is, it is very unhealthy and very damaging. You know, Amir, my mission and my passion is to wake people up help them to recognize the divine potential inside of them, right? The potential that they have, and then to help them live in pursuit of that. And it's, it's really interesting to me to hear you say this, is that gossip really does the exact opposite. It limits people's growth. It limits their relationships. It limits their network. It limits, I mean, everything that would take people in the direction of living in pursuit of their potential, it does the exact opposite of that, right? I mean, it's just the antithesis of growth. It's the antithesis of, of, of loving, trusting relationships. Um, I see, you know, what a, what a, you, you've really helped to highlight what a problem it is and um, helped me to really want to become more of a proponent of getting your book out, right? Gossip, right? The Road to Ruin, so that more people can, can understand what might be kind of lying below the surface and sabotaging all of their efforts to grow themselves in their organization. Ab absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, and when we, you look at a, uh, organization, people don't realize how much gossip is happening until it gets, you know, that's too late and the management then had to reach out and try to do something about it and sometimes it's too late. You know, according to a, a survey that they have done, 21% of employees gossip regularly at work, 15% gossip occasionally. And here's the inter interesting thing. 86% gossip about their work or about the people in the work environment, or it could be about the company or the management. And each session of gossiping takes about 15 minutes. So you can put two and two together and see how much time and energy is wasted inside a culture of a company or organization. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? Um, like you said, not just the impact, but those statistics really demonstrate how much time is wasted, right? When it could be such productive, helpful, uh, you know, work and movement forward for a person or, or, or an organization. 
Um, Amir, how do people get a copy of your book? I mean, I think we've, we've kind of laid the case that this is some, a problem that needs to be solved. It needs to be resolved. Even if you don't think you have it, you probably do have it personally and, and, and within your organization. Um, how do people get a, um, a hold of this? Uh, absolutely. It is available on Amazon and also Barnes and & Nobles. And I think most uh, online uh, bookstores uh, do uh, carry it. Awesome. Uh, people also can uh, contact me if they can find it, and I'll be happy to uh, uh, direct them to where, you know, where to get it. Awesome. What's uh, you- if they, if they uh, uh, Google Gossip, The Road to Ruin, find it, it. it pops right up okay. on, on Amazon. Perfect. Gossip, The Road to Ruin. Perfect, Amir. Um, let's talk about this really quickly. Um, you're a big thinker, right? You have done that for years. You've helped unlock other people when they get stuck. That's what you do professionally. Um, you know, for that reason, you are uh, a big thinker on the Think Bigger Real Estate Show. Amir, uh, I know you've answered this question before, but I'd love to hear it again and kind of what's changed for you. What does Amir Fachizada do to continue to be a big thinker, to continue to expand your possibilities? You see, uh, when I start thinking bigger than myself, when I empower someone else to think bigger than themselves it makes me be a bigger person because when that person can get to where they want it to be and accomplish and succeed in what they want i am a bigger thinker i'm a bigger person i it is like helping someone go up a hill that is hard for them to climb it but you're not touching them. You're right behind them. You're providing everything for them to ensure they will get, they will get on top. Mm-hmm. And guess what? When they get on top, who's on top? I am on top. Mm-hmm. You and that's them. what keeps you know, inspiring me to make a difference in the quality of people's uh, life. I mean, from what we're witnessing, especially nowadays, life is so short. And we only have this opportunity to do that. And sooner we do it, you know, more satisfying it will be. Not just for, you know, each one of us, I think for all of us. I love that. Get outside of yourself. Powerful words from a powerful man. Amir, it's been such a pleasure again. Thank you again for those that are just tuning in, maybe catching the tail end of this. This book, Gossip, The Road to Ruin, this book right here um, will change you and change your organization to where you eliminate the cancer that is sabotaging your personal and your professional growth efforts uh, behind the scenes. This is a powerful concept. Amir, I'm glad you spent the time to write this book. I'm glad you've taken the time to come pour into us here in the Think Bigger Real Estate Show audience. And uh, such a pleasure to have you as a friend and in my network. Thank you for all that you do. Uh, I really appreciate you. Thank you, uh, Justin. It was a pleasure being on your show. It was great to see you again. Uh, Stay safe. Great to see you as well. And my final request of everybody listening here today, there are three simple words and they are go think bigger. Thank you so much, Amir, for helping us identify how we can best do that by eliminating gossip. Thank you.